In this video, I wanted to do some of the homework problems on the product rule and the quotient rule. And so th these are homework problems from page 147, and the assignment was 1 through 49 odd. Um, I may not do all of the problems, but I do want to get through enough of them that uh, it gives you an idea of how to do the problems, and you can check your work, and um, hopefully this will be a benefit to you. So I'll just start with problem number one. It's like one we did in class yesterday. Um, it's x squared plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 2x. Uh, what most of the questions come from on the product and quotient rule is what does it look like when you clean it up? All right, so if I find the derivative of this function, and this function was g of x, g prime of x, remember the product rule is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So that's all the calculus that there is to this problem. The, the rest of it is just cleaning, so I'll go ahead and clean this one up for you. Uh, so when I distribute, I'll get 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x minus 2 uh, plus 2x cubed minus 4x. Combining like terms, I will have 4x cubed uh, minus 2x squared uh, minus 2x minus 2. And that is a perfectly fine cleanup of that problem. So that is problem number one. Problem number two, or three, we were doing the odds only here. In problem number three, you have h of t is equal to, now notice what I'm going to do the first thing in the problem, it's the cube root of t. I'm going to go ahead and write that as t to the one-third multiplied by t squared plus four. Now in this particular problem, if this was uh, on, and, and no one said you had to do the product rule, you could, from the beginning of the problem, go ahead and distribute the t to the one-third to these two terms and simply do the power rule. Uh, you'll get the same answer, and it, it may be a little simpler. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the product rule since that's what this assignment was on. So I'll have the first function, t to the one-third, times the derivative of the second, which is 2t, plus the second function. Oops, sorry, let's get rid of that. plus the second function, t squared plus 4, times the derivative of the first, which is 1 third t to the negative 2 thirds. So that was by the power rule. Cleaning that up, when I multiply, I'll have 2t to the 4 thirds. Remember, t to the first would be 3 thirds. And when I multiply exponents, I keep the base and um, add the exponent. Uh, and the next and distributing the next term, I'll have 1 third t. 2 is the same thing as 6 thirds. So 6 thirds minus 2 thirds is 4 thirds plus 4 thirds t to the negative 2 thirds. Now in the book, um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they factored out a t to the negative 2 thirds. Uh, you can do that. I'm not going to necessarily at this point require that you do that. Later on, we may need to set these things equal to something and solve them. But for now, that answer would be perfectly fine uh, with me. Uh, but again, your book may do some factoring there. Problem number five is like a problem we did in class. It's f of x equal to x cubed cosine x x cubed is the first function, cosine x is the second function. So the derivative here is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. There's not a whole lot of cleaning. We can drop some parentheses and make this negative x cubed sine x plus 3x squared cosine x. Again, we could factor out an x squared out of this if we needed to for uh, solving purposes. All right, that brings us to number seven, which is a quotient rule problem. Uh, we have 
f of x is equal to x over x squared plus 1. Remember the quotient rule. Down, d up, minus up, d down, over, down, down. Cleaning that up gives me x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Combining like terms gives me negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And although the numerator and the denominator look similar, there's no way that we can make them the same, and there's no way that we're going to be able to reduce anything out of this problem. Problem number nine, quotient rule again. I'm going to do a little rewrite from the beginning in the numerator. I'm going to go ahead and change that numerator to x to the one-third power instead of leaving it as the cube root of x. And in the denominator, I have x cubed plus one. Using the quotient rule, down d up minus up d down over down down cleaning will give me one third x three is going to be nine thirds so nine thirds minus two thirds is 7 thirds plus 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds minus 3 x. 2 would be 6 thirds. Uh, yeah, 6 thirds. So that would give me 7 thirds over x cubed plus 1 quantity squared. Again, I could factor some things out of the numerator. I could work on those um, coefficients and get the fractions out. For now, this is fine because I mainly just want you to practice um, the quotient rule. All right, let's take a look at number 11. Number 11, we have g of x is equal to sine x over x squared. Quotient rule, down, d up, minus up, d down, over, down, down. That will give me x squared cosine x minus 2x sine x over x to the fourth. Now, in this case, every term has an x in it. So I can divide out an x, and an x, and an x, and so as a final answer, I would get cosine x minus 2 sine x over x cubed. And that simple cleaning, I do think you should go ahead and perform. Number 13. Uh, we're using the product rule again, and this time they're asking us not only to find the derivative, but go ahead and um, evaluate it at a particular value. So f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. And they want me to find the derivative at c equal to 0. So first of all, I'm going to find the general derivative. So first, times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, since we're simply evaluating this derivative at zero, I'm not even going to try to clean that up because all I want is the numerical derivative, and I can go ahead and put zero in here. So I have zero cubed minus 3 times 0 times 4 times 0 plus 3 plus 
2 times 0 squared plus 3 times 0 plus 5 times 3 times 0 squared minus 3. So let's clean that up. Uh, in this uh, first expression, the whole thing is 0, and 0 times any number is 0. So all of this just makes 0. In the second term, this will be 0. This will be 0. So I end up with 5 in my my pen wants to stop writing again. It has a habit of doing that. I think it's back now. 5, and this would be 0, times negative 3 would give me negative 15. So 0 plus negative 15 gives me negative 15. So that's just finding a derivative and then evaluating it at a particular value. And again, uh, since I wanted a particular value, I wasn't going to waste time cleaning up the expression. Uh, let's do a few more of these. Let's jump down to uh, let's jump down to number 20. That uh, we didn't do 20. Let's jump down to 19. That gives us another product rule problem involving this time e. We haven't done one with e yet, so I get e to the x sine x. And again, they want me to evaluate this at c equals zero. So the derivative product rule first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Again, I'm just going to evaluate at a particular value, so I'm not going to clean. That gives me e to the 0 times cosine of 0 plus sine of 0 times e to the 0. We know that e to the 0 is 1. The cosine of 0 is also 1. The sine of 0 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So that gives me 1 plus 0, which is 1. Um, there may have been a few questions in 21 and 23 and 25, um, and not because they're difficult, but because you may not have understood what the directions were asking you to do. Uh, in the directions, say complete the table without using the quotient rule. So in other words, they're just reminding you that if you can avoid the quotient rule, go ahead and avoid it. So for example, in number 21, x cubed plus 2x over 3. Since this denominator is simply a number, um, we could pull it out and make it a coefficient. Uh, there are lots of things we can do here. We could look at it as uh, 1 third x cubed plus 2 thirds x. And now, I don't need the quotient rule at all. I'm just going to use the power rule. And that'll be um, x squared plus 2 thirds. So that's the point of this section, is that you can, when you have a monomial denominator, let's look at another one. Let's look at number 23. When you have a monomial denominator, you don't have to use the quotient rule. And in fact, if you can avoid the quotient rule, you should avoid the quotient rule. So for example, when we sprinkle our algebra on number 23, we get 7 thirds x to the negative 5. So there's my rewrite. So the derivative of that would be negative 35 thirds x to the negative 6. And that's my answer. So that's what they were asking you to do in that section. Um, the next section, they get a little bit more uh, challenging and fun. So let's tackle. Oh, which one shall we do in there? Um, number 27 is pretty straightforward, but, but 29, I bet you're going to have a question on that one. So f of x is equal to x times 1 minus 4 over x plus 3. All right, let me talk to you about how I would do this problem. The directions say find the derivative of the algebraic function. The directions don't say use the quotient rule or use the product rule. So I'm going to use my algebra skills. I'm going to distribute the x, because I do not want to do the product rule here and the quotient rule. So when I distribute the x, I get x minus 4x over x plus 3. So when I find the derivative of the first term, that's just 1. I just, just a normal derivative. I don't have to do anything fancy. Now, in the second term, there's not a whole lot I can do to avoid the quotient rule. So I'm going to do a minus and a parenthesis. <coughs> Excuse me. And a parenthesis. You have to be careful there because the negative has to distribute to everything. 
I'm going to do the quotient rule. Down, D up, minus up, D down, over, down, down. So that'll give me 1 minus, still big parenthesis, 4x plus 12 minus 4x over x plus 3 quantity squared. The 4x's are going to divide out, so really that just leaves me with 1 minus 12 over x plus 3 quantity squared. In the back of the book, they'll probably get a common denominator, but for now, this is perfectly a perfectly fine answer. Uh, let's pick out another one in there. Uh, number 31 is an easy one because, again, uh, we talked about it in the last section. I don't need the quotient rule here. Not going to use the quotient rule. We're going to avoid it if possible. So I'm not going to take this one all the way through. That's over the square root of x. I'm going to make it x to the 1 half. I'm not going to use quotient rule. I'm going to rewrite that as 2x to the 1 half plus 5x to the negative 1 half. In other words, I'm just going to use algebra. And now I'll do the power rule to find that derivative. Uh, number 33 is s cubed minus 2, h of s, is s cubed minus 2 quantity squared. For that one, I'm going to square it. Remember, square the first, so s to the 6, double the product, minus 4s cubed, and square the last. Now I'm going to use the power rule. No big deal. So you've got to use all of your derivative tools. Use the right tool for the right job. Number 35, that's one you'll probably want to know about. In number 35, we have f of x is equal to 2 minus 1 over x over x minus 3. Now, what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to clean that up. I'm not going to leave it as a complex fraction. So in the numerator, the common denominator would be x. So I'll get 2x minus 1 over x minus 3. Remember, that's over 1. I'm going to multiply, when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this cleans up to be 2x minus 1 over x squared minus 3x. Now that's not the derivative. That was all just the algebra that gets this problem ready for calculus. So from here, I would do the quotient rule to find the derivative. But the algebra comes first to make life easier for me. Uh, 37, that's another interesting question. Number 37, notice that when I gave you the product rule, the product rule says if you have a product of two functions, and so this one is a product of three functions. So we have f of x equal to 3x cubed plus 4x times x minus 5 times x plus 1. Well, since the product rule applies to a product of two functions, then job number one is to apply the algebra, always sprinkle algebra first. I'm going to multiply these two binomials. To, I, it can be any two. I'm just picking the uh, more simple uh, binomial. This will be x squared minus 4x minus 5, and now I'm ready for the product rule where this is the first function, this is the second function, and I'll do the product rule from here. Um, let's jump down to the next section. Mostly, the only thing that's going on here is they're just throwing some, some, letting you practice some trig. So 41 is just like one we did in class. 43, we've done one like that. Let's do number 45. 45 says f of x is equal to e, sorry, negative e to the x plus tangent x. Uh-oh, we're encountering one that we don't know yet. So 45 and 47 are going to give us a fit. 49 is okay. I'll go ahead and do this one because we did, I think, in class mention a little bit. Um, the derivative of e to the x is our favorite derivative of all. This doesn't require quotient rule. It doesn't require product rule. It just requires you to know these derivatives. 
you don't know this yet, you're going to learn it real soon. The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. So really, I shouldn't have assigned that problem, and I do apologize. But number 49, we definitely can do. This is going to be the last problem that I do. So y is equal to 3 times 1 minus sine x over 2 cosine x. Now in this problem, I'm going to distribute the 3 in the numerator, just to get it a little bit cleaner. Because I don't want to do the uh, product rule and the quotient rule. So now this is a product, um, I mean, excuse me, a quotient rule problem. So here, let's do this, let's go down instead of across. So down, the up, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of 3 sine x is negative 3 cosine x, so that's down d up, minus up, d down, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, over down down, that would be 4 cosine square x. Cleaning that up a little bit will give me negative 6 cosine square x, let's see, minus parenthesis, negative 6 sine x plus 6 sine square x, so I multiplied, I distributed the, the negative 2 sine x, and that's still over 4 cosine square x. Let's see if we can clean it a little bit more. Now when I distribute this negative, so this will become a plus, plus, and a minus. Um, if I, watch this, if I do the negative 6 cosine squared x minus 6 sine squared x, plus 6 sine x over 4 cosine squared x. So all I did is I took these terms right here and I just rearranged them and I put the cosine squared and the sine squared together. Um, I can take a negative 6 out of the numerator, which would leave me with cosine squared x plus sine squared x minus sine x over 4 cosine squared x. And then from uh, pre-cal, remember that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is simply equal to 1. So I can replace that with a 1. That'll give me negative 6 times 1 minus sine x over 4 cosine squared x, and of course I can reduce the 6 fourths to be 3 halves. Okay, watch this video over again, or watch particular problems over again if you need help, and certainly you can come in and see me for more help. I uh, hope, this, this, uh, hope this does help you with uh, some of your product rule, quotient rule problems.